hello and welcome to my channel if you're new here i am rachel and i share what's for dinner videos every week and now we're getting started on a sunday we had a lot to do on this day we had a grand uh child's birthday party to go to so i got some beef stew started in my crock pot i started by adding some stew meat right into the crock and then i'm adding a little bit of water I um, left a little bit of water in this little jar so that I could add my better than bouillon and get it all mixed up and then I just poured that in over top of that meat. What I love about beef stew recipes is that they're very forgiving and you can just use whatever you have on hand. I have some potatoes that I already washed and cut up into big chunks. Next I poured in a can of petite diced tomatoes and then I added some uh, frozen celery that I already had in my freezer and had prepped beforehand like the week before. Next I added some onions and I just left those in really big pieces. And then I added all of my spices. I have some garlic powder, salt, pepper, and um, some cayenne pepper and it looks like maybe some of that mushroom powder but you can always use whatever spices your family likes. I think I did add some Italian seasoning. So here we went to this roller skating party, had a lot of fun with all of our grandkids. Here's our little bow. And um, then the birthday boy was Shane. He turned 10 this year. So um, happy birthday to our Shane. And when we got home, this is what our beef stew looked like. And I just gave it a stir and got all of those um, vegetables all mixed together. Everything was super flavorful. And it was so nice to already have dinner ready for us when we returned home that evening. And you can just add whatever seasonings, whatever vegetables that you want. I don't know. This was kind of a thin stew, so maybe we would call this a soup. It's whatever at our house. Um, it still tasted really good. And I could have thickened it up with um, any type of thickener, but we just left it how it was. And to go along with it, I just made up some corn muffins. So that was a really quick and easy Sunday dinner. Next, we're moving on into Monday. And to get started, I have some brown sugar in a bowl. I have a little water in my brown sugar jar because it had hardened. I added some apple cider vinegar, some stone ground mustard, some crushed red pepper flakes, and some garlic powder because that's what I had. I used some onion flakes because I did not have onion powder. I also didn't have soy sauce, but I made it work with some of these soy uh, sauce packets from Chinese takeout. And once I got everything into the bowl, I just gave it a stir to break down that brown sugar and get everything mixed together. Next, I am just cooking up some frozen um, hamburger meat. And so because I did not plan ahead, I am working with this hamburger meat doing the old uh, flip and scrape method. And I just made sure that I seasoned it up with some salt and some pepper and some garlic powder and then just continued to do the scrape and flip method. Let me know if you've ever had to do this. Um, not my favorite way to cook hamburger meat, but it happens sometimes. And eventually it gets the job done. So I added in some of the frozen green peppers that I prepped the week before or on the weekend and just had them in my freezer ready to go. So that's always a, a help. And so um, I am making Korean beef or my version of it. And so um, sometimes or a lot of times in my kitchen, I am making do with what I have and just kind of improvising. Next, I added in some large sliced onions because I wanted really big pieces. Um, we just like onions and I wanted like really big flavorful pieces. I had some shredded cabbage in my fridge. So that's what's in the other pan and I'm just frying that up also. I'm adding a little bit of those uh, onion flakes and just kind of cooking it up in some olive oil. Bill doesn't care for rice, so I'm making up this cabbage. And so I didn't have any cornstarch, so I just opted to thicken up my um, Korean beef, kind of like you would uh, some with gravy, like 
sausage gravy or something like that. So I sprinkled on a quarter cup of flour and I'm just cooking that through and stirring it around to get that flour taste out before I add my sauce. And I'm just gonna stir it up a little to make sure that that sugar is nice and dissolved and then pour it right in and then let that simmer and blend in with the flour in the meat and get nice and thick. I came back in with some sesame oil and just drizzled on a tiny bit because I think it just adds such a nice flavor. And that's it. I just let it simmer and let all those flavors blend together. I heated up some rice that was left over from when Bill got Chinese takeout. And uh, he doesn't like rice, so there's always leftover white rice. And so that's what I had with mine. The boys had ramen with theirs, so it's kind of like one of those do-whatever-you-want kind of nights. And then I just sliced up some avocado on the side, and this is what my dinner looked like. Now that was easy. On Tuesday, um, because Bill was not around, I decided to make up some tuna type of meal because he hates tuna, doesn't even like the smell of it in the house. So um, we do tend to have tuna on days when he isn't home. So I am just making some tuna patties and I just opened up the tuna, drained it, poured in some breadcrumbs and added an egg for a binder and then just mixed it all up. And I am using my waffle iron to make these tuna patties. Normally I would fry them in oil in a pan and just kind of cook them up that way. But I decided to make um, a tuna burger using my waffle iron. And so I just kind of put the whole uh, ball of tuna <laughs> and breadcrumbs right there in the middle of my waffle iron and then just let them cook and get nice and crispy. Meanwhile, I added some mayo to our buns. Now, tartar sauce would also be good, but I didn't have any and I didn't have the ingredients to make tartar sauce. We had some shredded lettuce left over from taco night. And so I'm just adding some lettuce to each of our buns. And then this is how it turned out. Now, if you're really OCD, don't look because the little line was not centered. So I'm just kind of cutting these into even pieces so that I have four tuna burgers. And uh, then I'm just going to place each one onto um, each bun. They were nice and crispy. Although these were really tasty i think i do prefer to cook them in oil just because you get that added uh fried taste that's just what i like anyway i just topped each one with a tomato slice and then added the top bun which i also put mayo on because you want them to be um nice and juicy these tuna um patties and the waffle iron tended to be a little dry to me but they were still good and we just served up some chips on the side, although I didn't show individual plates or anything. You get the idea. Not only was this one easy, it came together super fast. Now on Wednesday, we had breakfast for dinner again. It seems to be a Wednesday thing for us. And I just cooked up some sausage, got it nice and crumbly. And then I added a bunch of eggs into a bowl. I'm doing about a dozen eggs for the four of us. So I'm making omelets and I used about three eggs per person. So um, I'm just cracking all of my eggs into a bowl and adding some milk, got them whisked together, added them into my skillet with a little bit of olive oil. And then the way that I make an omelet is just kind of move the cooked edges around and then let the runny part of the egg um, flow underneath and get cooked as well until you have one nice flat uh, evenly cooked piece of egg there and then I like to season the inside of my omelets because I don't like to bite into a omelet and have it be nice and bland on the inside next I just layered in some of that sausage on one side now these are just a really simple and quick um 
omelet. You can do whatever you like. Usually I do different toppings, but this is what we had and this was what was going to be the fastest. We just were ready to have dinner. It was late on this day. I got out of work late. We've had some really crappy weather and so this is the first one and it was a little dark but then here is what mine turned out like i did make some tater tots to go along with it this really hit the spot we were having some really funky weather here in michigan so this one was very comforting the next day we went out to eat at a chinese buffet and nothing much to see here but the usual but that's what was for dinner and then on Friday, we wanted to have steak and I was just craving fried radishes. Oh, that is something that I discovered on Pinterest one day. And I do not like radishes raw at all and had never had them cooked. So decided to give it a try and lo and behold, they're actually, actually really tasty. So I was actually craving them. And um, so I had to go to the store and do a produce um, haul anyway just to have some fresh stuff in the house so i picked up this bag of radishes and all i'm doing here is cutting off the ends and i made sure that they were washed up really good because radishes are generally really dirty and so then i just cut them in half and then cut them in little slices and i'm just going to cook them like you do fried potatoes I have a couple of cast iron skillets warming up with some oil. I added my sliced radishes into um, the one in the back here. And I just seasoned them up with the same seasoning that I used on our steaks, which was my um, homemade Texas Roadhouse copycat seasoning. And so Bill is adding those steaks into the hot skillet now that that oil is nice and hot. And we're going to try to get a good sear on these steaks. Although we did crowd them a little bit, we made it work. And those radishes turned out so delicious. Like I said, you just cook them up like you do fried potatoes. And so our steaks were busy cooking. I got... Um, the gravy going I just used the pan that I made the steak in so all of the sticky little bits were in the bottom and those little pieces of garlic were still in there so this gravy was just some brown gravy mix I just mixed it according to the package directions and then made sure to stir and scrape all the bits and pieces off the bottom of my cast iron skillet and this gravy turned out very delicious and then here is my finished plate. This was a very tasty and kind of an easy dinner after all. We just made up some instant potatoes to go with that and it came together pretty effortlessly. I always find that a meat potato and a veg is a pretty basic way to feed feed and please my family and I wanted to make those steaks on the grill but this is what was coming through our area at the time. Another snowstorm surprise surprise well even though we got a lot of snow dumped on us at least we didn't lose our power and it was a good excuse to stay in and cook some goulash I started off by cooking up my elbow macaroni and then draining it I'm using the same pot to cook up the meat I'm sprinkling in some uh, uh, garlic that I diced up with my food chopper I have a pound of sausage and a pound of ground beef I then added some chopped up green peppers and onions from my freezer. I'm saving myself some dishes by cooking this whole uh, meal in one pot. And even though I started off by getting my ground beef out early in the morning to thaw, it was still partially frozen in the middle, so I'm just giving that some time to cook and thaw. I sprinkled that meat with some salt and some pepper. And, and just because kept we on like to working have a on getting it added to it as well, cooked. I added one envelope of the beefy onion soup mix. My husband doesn't care for a really tomato saucy goulash, so I like to add some uh, beef broth to it. I'm also adding two cans of petite diced tomatoes. I know I just said that he doesn't care for a real tomato saucy goulash, but I do. And this day, it was about me. 
I was really wanting this goulash and I was making it for myself. Next I added in my cooked macaroni and yeah there's nothing graceful about anything that I do. So anyway I'm just working on getting it all broken up. It had been sitting there while I was cooking that meat so it kind of stuck together. You can always um, run some water over it and loosen it up or whatever but it really wasn't that bad. It just came right apart after a couple stirs. I just mixed that tomato um, and macaroni and meat stuff all together making sure that I scooped from the bottom and brought up the peppers and onions. I then added a can of tomato sauce and then mixed it all together. I do come back in with about a half a can of water because my elbow macaroni noodles were a little al dente and I wanted to give them some liquid to soak up and I feel like when they uh, simmer or sit and soak up the liquid from the goulash then they just have all that good flavor right inside of the noodle. I tend to go really heavy with the black pepper. We just love it so much. But of course, if you're not a big fan of black pepper or you don't like spicy food, then I just wouldn't do that. I also added some red pepper flakes as well because like I said, our whole family likes spicy food. So there you go. Some red pepper flakes just gives it a little bit of a kick. And I just let this simmer for a little while. Goulash always tastes better after it's had time to simmer and the noodles get to soak up all of that good yummy sauce. But this one pot meal is just about ready to eat. I did decide in the end since I had it on hand and I want to make sure I use it to chop up some parsley and mix that in as well. And I just served mine up with some bread and butter on the side. And there was so much flavor in this bowl. My family just was over the moon. Everybody came back for seconds. And that's going to wrap up another full week of what we had for dinner at our house. If you liked what you saw here today, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe if you would like to see more of my future videos. I'm going to say bye for now, and I'll see you in the next one.